The hour of convening having arrived, all members will come to the floor of the House and take their seats. All members of this House come to the floor and take seats. The clerk will ring the bell. All members come to the floor of the house. We're going to take the roll here momentarily. I need to rem hope I don't need to remind you that at 11 a.m. we have the state of the state. All members come to the floor of the house. We're about to take the call of the roll. We're going to do morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. We will have scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 114th House District, Representative Tom Kirby. Representative Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is indeed a pleasure to, to bring my pastor from Church of the Grove, Russ Butcher, to us today. Uh, back in 2006, my wife, Rosemary, and I were blessed to be part of a church plant. And we started Church of the Grove in 2006 with a simple mission that Pastor Butcher led us in, and that was to reach out to those that are the least likely to be in church. And from that simple mission, God has blessed us to now we have a gathering on Sunday mornings in Walnut Grove, a second gathering in Social Circle, and a third gathering in Radia, Romania. And in a short six years, we've seen a lot of powerful things happen. I think you will enjoy hearing from Pastor Russ Butcher today, and it's my honor and privilege to introduce you to my pastor, Russ Butcher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Kirby. It's an honor to be here. A lot of people ask, why in the world did you name your church The Grove? And it, there's a connection to the little town of Walnut Grove, but I often tell people that most churches are like a grove. It contains either fruit or nuts. <clears throat> I'm often asked which category Representative Kirby would f fit in. Um, it's, I'm excited that Tom has been able to come here. Tom is a man that our church and our community has been excited about, uh, coming to serve. Uh, he's a man of high character. He's a man of high integrity. Of course, I've read the local papers, and I've been worried a little bit about your influence on him. Um, <laughs> I have a beautiful wife. Her name is Jill. I have a 14-year-old son that's a ninth grader at Loganville High School. I have a 
beautiful daughter named Abigail. She's a sixth grader. And then I have a little seven-year-old Caleb. Yes, I'm 47 years old and I have a seven-year-old. Unlike many, I spent most of my 20s going to everybody else's wedding, thinking that I, I soon would find my bride. And I got tired of it going to the weddings because very often the old people at the weddings would come up to me, many of them looked like you, and they would <laughs> grab me by the cheek and they would tell me, don't worry, you'll be next, you'll be next. And so I didn't like that, so I decided the next time I went to a funeral and I saw those same older people, I tell you about my family because I have a strong conviction, a strong conviction for and a desperate need to see leadership developed in our families. I believe as the family goes, the church goes, as the church goes, the community goes, the nation goes. And I often challenge my church to consider that their family units are pace setters in our church, also pace setters in our community, and that our biblical values and our relationship with God must be more than rhetoric, but it must be a sincere desire to influence our families and our communities. I believe that God speaks to every area of our lives through his word, and, and those words that are contained in this book and the scriptures must influence our marriages, our parenting, our financial decisions, our community involvement, every area of our lives. And as I challenge the leaders and families in our church to step out in faith, to lead, I've realized it starts with me. It starts with me. I must set the example. I must be a godly husband. I must be a godly father. I must engage my community as God directs me through his word. For God's sake, I must lead. And when I challenge others to step up and to be leaders, whether it's you or people in my church, I realize there's three fingers pointing back at me, and it starts with me. And here's the conclusion that I have come to and the conviction that I hold. And I'll, I'll phrase it according to the way I heard one of my mentors phrase it. Simply this, that leadership is a stewardship. It's temporary, and we'll all be held accountable for how we lead. As women, as wives, as mothers, as men, as husband, husbands and fathers, as CEOs, as managers, employees, or, or engaged citizens, we must take our influence and our leadership seriously. Leadership is a stewardship. It's temporary, and we'll be held accountable. In 586 B.C., the kingdom of Babylon conquered Jerusalem. They began to take many people many of them that were the brightest young people, and they exiled them to the city of Babylon. And among these young people was a young man named Daniel, a gifted young leader that had strong convictions. He was put into a place where he had tremendous influence, and he interpreted dreams for two specific kings that are mentioned in Scripture in the kingdom of Babylon. And over time, his influence began to increase. And those two leaders, they were rulers of Babylon. They came face to face with a reality, just like all of us must come face to face with, and the fact that leadership is a stewardship at all levels, leaders in the home, spiritual leaders, business leaders, legislators, all levels of society. These two kings were Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, and they both relied on Daniel's influence and his leadership. In 538... Daniel still had tremendous leadership. Proud Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, is having a celebration at a party. The interesting thing about his celebration is that while he's having a party and a celebration in his palace, the Persian Empire is literally camped around the city of Babylon. In the midst of that celebration, a supernatural event takes place. The fingers of a human hand appear and write on the plaster wall of the king of the king's palace. The king saw the writing. He was filled with fear. He called upon someone to interpret what the writing was, and none of his advisors could interpret it. But Belshazzar's queen remembered Daniel, and they called him to come. 
And I'd like to read it from Daniel chapter 5, verses 22 through 30. And he says, and you, his son, Belshazzar, here's what he says, you have not humbled your heart. And I would say that probably one of the key character traits of the leader that will have the kind of influence that we're talking about is humility. You have not humbled your heart, though you knew all of this. Verse 23, but you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven, and the vessels of his house have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose hand is your breath, and whose all are all your ways you have not honored. Then from his presence the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mene, Mene, Tekel, and Parson. This is the interpretation of the matter. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Paris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed in purple a chain of gold was put around his neck and a proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that very night, we see that Belshazzar finds out that leadership is a stewardship and it is temporary. That very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed. What does that mean for us? Three things. As leaders of our families, leaders of our churches, leaders of our communities, and leaders here. First of all, we can rest in the sovereignty of God. The apostle John quotes Jesus in the gospel of John 16, He said, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The second thing is this, is... We can remember this for sure, that ballots, bullets, and bombs, or the lack of ballots, the lack of bullets, or the lack of bombs will not be the answer to transform this world. Only changed hearts by the work of the Spirit of God will transform this world. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 12, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And then thirdly, God is committed to people over and above anything else. God is committed to people over ideology and over political ideas. I live in a neighborhood I tell my church that I live in a village that has 105 huts in it, and I am the chief missionary of my village. And in that village, there are people from all backgrounds, all walks of life, and all ideologies. Their beliefs are different. And my responsibility is to see them as the Heavenly Father sees them. Matthew 10, 29 and 30 through 31, Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. May we be able to say with the psalmist, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, Thank you for the role that you've given each and every one of us, men and women, husband and wives, leaders at every level. May we hold it and cherish it and be good stewards of it. I pray for every person, every leader here. Pray for their families. Pray for their communities. Bless them. Lead them. Guide them. And we trust in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you'll turn to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes the lady from the 123rd District, Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, Representative Sims. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Information and Audits has read the proceedings of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. Representative Sims, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. O'Neill, the 146, Ms. following established as the order of business during the first part of the period of unanimous consent. Introduction of bills and resolutions, first reading reference to bills and resolutions, second reading of bills and resolutions, morning orders, privilege resolutions through the order of business established for this legislative day. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 5, representing Wakes the 60th, the Bill of Anti-Light Midnight Incorporating City of Forest Park. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 31, representing Mayo of 84th, Bill of Anti-Light Midnight Title 4, really miscellaneous provisions and uniform rules of the road. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 67, representing Kidd, 145th, the Bill of Anti-Light Midnight Title 15, relating to Brain, Spinal Injury, Trust Fund. Judiciary. House Bill 68, Representative Kidd of the 145th Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Code Section 43-3411, relating to continuing education crime with physicians. Health and Human Services. House Bill 69, Representative Benton, 31st Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Title 48, related to debiture of property sold for taxes. Ways and Means. House Bill 70, Representative Golick, 40th Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Title 20, relating to scholarship programs, special needs to higher education. House Bill 71, Representative Riley, the 50th Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Code Section 47283, relating to certificate. Retirement. House Bill 72, Representative Smith, 70th Bill of the Entitled Act, New Charter, City of Newnham. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 73, Representative Lindsay, the 54th Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Title 33, relating to general prison drugs to insurance. Insurance. House Bill 74, Representative Lindsay, the 54th Bill of the Entitled Act, Title 33, relating to generally to insurance. Insurance. House Bill 75, Representative Kidd, 145th Bill of the Entitled Act, Title 20, relating to Georgia Student Finance Authority. Higher Education. House Bill 76, Representative Holt, 112th Bill of the Entitled Act, Title 22, relating to electric transportation. Energy, Utilities, and Telecommunications. House Bill 77, Representative Holt, 112th Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Title 22, relating to electric transmission lines. Energy, Utilities, and Communications. House Bill 78, Representative Willard, 51st Bill of the Entitled Act, Men Title 31, relating to crimes, offenses, depositions. Judiciary. House Bill 79, Representative Willard, 51st Bill of the Entitled Act, Revised, Modernized Corrections, Code of Georgia. Judiciary. 
House Bill 80, by Representative Rice, 95th, Bill of Mentile, like Mentile 48, Revenue and Taxation. Ways and Means. House Bill 81, Representative Dudgeon, 25th, the Bill of Mentile, like relating to income tax credit, qualified investments. Ways and Means. House Bill 82, Representative Earhart, 36, the Bill of Mentile, like Mentile 18, enact the Small Business Bar Protection Act. Banks and Banking. House Bill 83, Representative Knight, 130th, the Bill of Mentile, like Mentile 700, licensing mortgage lenders. Banks and Banking. House Resolution 24, Bill Representative Kidd, 145th, propose amendment constitution to provide for increased fees, ratification of the amendment. Judiciary. House Resolution 30, Bill Representative Brooks, 55th, honoring Doc Rosa Par Mrs. Rosa Parks, Dr. Abernathy, and others worthy of enduring memorials, earned the placement of their portraits in the State capital. properties. Through the first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. HB 3 by Representative Willard of the 51st, the bill relating to practice and professional forestry and evidence. HB 36 by Representative Watson of the 166, bill relating to fish and game definitions. HB 53 by Representative Dickerson of the 113th, the bill relating to standards, labeling, and adulteration of food. HB 54 by Representative Evans of the 42nd, a bill relating to eligibility requirements for HOPE grants. HB 55 by Representative Golick of the 40th, a bill relating to wiretapping, eavesdropping, surveillance, and related offenses. HB 56, Representative Ramsey of the 72nd, a bill relating to general provisions regarding superior courts. HB 57 by Representative Ramsey of the 72nd, a bill relating to Schedule 1 controlled substances. HB 58 by Representative Sims of the 169th, a bill re relating to general provisions pertaining to alcoholic beverages. HB 59 by Representative Taylor of the 79th, a bill relating to general provisions for law enforcement officers and agencies. HB 60 by Representative Holt of the 112th, a bill relating to carrying and possession of firearms. HB 61 by Representative Kidd of the 145th, a bill relating to registration of lobbyists, lobbying reporting, and regulation of lobbying activities. HB 62 by Representative Kidd of the 145th, a bill relating to imposition rate, collection, and assessment of sales and use tax. HB 63 by Representative Chanel of the 120th, a bill relating to amend and act creating a board of commissioners, Greene County. HB 64 by Representative Chanel of the 120th, a bill to amend an act to provide that certain officials of Greene County who have served at least 15 years in office may, upon leaving, continue to participate in the county health insurance program. HB 65 by Representative Chanel of the 120th, a bill to amend an act creating Board of Education of Greene County. HB 66 by Representative Rice of the 95th, a bill relating to revenue and taxation. HR 2 by Representative Waits of the 60th, resolution urging the Congress of the United States to pass legislation increasing the criminal penalties for offenders involved in human trafficking and to provide greater assistance to the women and children victims of these heinous crimes through second readers. If you, um, I'm going to ask the House to come to order. Ask the House to come to order, please. Take your conversations to the ante rooms or to the hallways. We're about to go to morning orders. We're about to transact some business. And we have a joint session beginning in a little better than 30 minutes. If you signed up for a morning order, make your way down to the front of the chamber. And while members are doing that, Pursuant to House Resolution 8, the chair appoints from this house as a committee of escort for the governor of Georgia today, the following. Representative Hatchett from the 150th, Representative Coomer from the 14th District, Representative Nimmer from the 178th District, from Hall County, Representative Rogers from the 29th, Representative Donahue from the 30th, Representative Hawkins from the 27th, and Representative Barr from the 103rd.
Those members are due to be in the office of the governor, I think at 1045. Chair recognizes for a morning order, Representative Coach Williams. Representative Williams, gonna ask members to confine their remarks to two minutes each this morning. Two minutes each. Thank you, Mr. Thank House you, will be, just a gentleman suspend. The members are entitled to respect when they're in the well. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I have a safety bill here. If you'd like to be a part of this, I'll just read the capture. It says, so as to prohibit the use of telecommunication devices for oral communication, unless such device is a hand-free communication device. If you would like to sign on to this, I have it over here for a few minutes. Thank you, Chair, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes for a morning order, Representative, or I'm sorry, Chairman Knight and Chairman Burns for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We would like to go ahead and get ahead of all the business today. Remind you that today is Sportsman's Sportsman and Coastal Day at the Capitol. You've seen all, all the, uh, everything downstairs, the displays, and we welcome you to join those um, and interact with those displays, and also join us at lunchtime for shrimp and oysters that will be shucked for you. Now, David Knight is the chairman of the, the um, uh, Sportsman Caucus, and David has an announcement also. Um, at, at every year at the beginning of the two-year term, we always sign back up with, uh, to be a member of the Sportsman's Caucus. Uh, I would encourage you uh, to do that next week or when we come back into session, I will have the, uh, the, the one-page form on your desk. And again, we would encourage you to be become a member of the Sportsman's Caucus and show your support for uh, uh, all of the uh, outdoorsmen in the state of Georgia and how much we appreciate uh, the resources we have. Thank you, and I hope again you'll be able to join us at lunchtime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes for a morning order Representative Peak. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just want to remind everyone, give you another opportunity to sign the Downtown Renaissance Act, uh, which is our tax, uh, tax credit for investment in Georgia's downtowns. And we'll hang on to the bill. We'll have it. Uh, we're going to drop it a week from Monday, which is Mayor's Day um, at the Capitol. And I promise you, you'll be asked by your mayor, have you signed the Downtown Renaissance Act? So if you want to sign it, I've got it. Uh, we'll drop it a week from Monday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Tanner to introduce the doctor of the day, Representative Tanner. Appreciate that, Mr. Speaker. It's my honor to recognize my friend, Dr. Anderson, with the exception of his father. He's a fifth generation physician all of whom were in family medicine serving in the North Georgia area. Dr. Anderson attended medical school on a state scholarship and worked to pay this back by practicing medicine in underserved areas for five years. He is a Vietnam War veteran, and while serving in private practice, Dr. Anderson serves the community of Dawson County as the medical director of the free clinic, as the chairman of the Board of Health, and as associate professor in clinical medicine. Dr. Anderson has served for more than 25 years as a doctor of the day. Dr. Anderson. Thank, thank you, Mr. Tanner. I would also like to introduce my fourth year medical student. This is uh, student Dr. Patrick Kindergrand. He's a fourth year student at the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. As a rural physician, the question I get asked most is, do, do I make house calls? And so today I can say, honestly, yes, I make them once a year, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I have two thank yous for you. One is thank you for, for funding state medical scholarships that we pay back by serving in underserved areas. And the second thank you is not for you, but it's for your family. Watching Mr. Tanner go through his election process you know, in Dawson County, became aware of how much time, effort, work, sacrifice, and love that your families do in order for you to be elected and serve in this house. So please send my thank you to them. 
Come see us at the aid station. We're on the second floor. No appointments, no waiting, and we don't take insurance. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Good to have you with us. Let's Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. The clerk will read. The first resolution is a resolution by Representative Oliver Lady Seconds. Uh, invitation resolution being read for the first time today and referred to rules. Congratulating poet Natasha Trethaway receiving a distinguished position, 19 Fort Lawrence of the United States, inviting her to be recognized by the House of Representatives. The following resolution is a resolution being read today, first time for adoption. Resolution by Representative Williams, 168, recognizing and commending Mr. John D. McIver, occasion of his retirement. Resolution by Representative Nick, 69, congratulating Mr. and Mrs. Carlton and Isla Creshaw on the occasion of their 80th wedding anniversary, January 29, 2013. Resolution by Representative Kirby, 114, recognizing and commending Robert L. Bobby Boss, outstanding Georgia citizen, through the privilege resolution. Is there objection to adoption of the privilege resolutions? Chair hears none, the resolutions are adopted. House will come to order. We're about to uh, recognize a very distinguished guest with us today. And for that purpose, the chair recognizes Representative Oliver for an invite resolution. Representative Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are all proud to bring our constituents here to this floor, and I have a very special guest today. Professor Natasha Trethaway is the National Poet Laureate of the United States of America. She is a constituent of mine and Ron Mayo and an old friend of Representative Chandler. Most importantly, perhaps, to some of you, she was a cheerleader at the University of Georgia. And she is a, excuse me, head cheerleader. <laughs> She's a graduate of the Cab County High School and a 2007 Pulitzer Prize winner of poetry. The National Poet Laureate is appointed by the Library of Congress, and Professor Trethway will begin her sabbatical in Washington in the next few weeks, and this was the last week she'd be in Atlanta with us. Very proud today to introduce to you the National Poet Laureate, a resident of Decatur, Georgia, Natasha Trethway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is very much an honor to be recognized by the state I now call home uh, in this way. I'm on my way to Washington tomorrow to occupy my office in the Library of Congress, and I just want you to know that I will represent the South very well. I'm the first poet laureate from the South since Robert Penn Warren. You might remember him. So now there's going to be another one of us in the library. Thank you.
Okay, um, I'm trying to get us into a position where we can take care of all of the business before that other crowd comes over here. I want you to join with me um, in these few minutes and we have some uh, important dates coming up between now and when we come back in session, such as tomorrow, January 18th, will be the birthday of Representative Hugh Floyd. Representative Floyd, an early birthday to you. <laughs> on Sunday, while we'll all be watching the Falcons win and move on to the Super Bowl, down in Early County, they're Everything will be closed up to celebrate the birthday of Representative Gerald Green. Representative Green, happy birthday. And on January 23rd, it'll be the birthday of Chairman Howard Maxwell. An early birthday to Chairman Maxwell. While we're waiting, um, the chair would use this opportunity to give you a little um, housekeeping information. As all of you know by now, the House Committee on Assignments has completed its work and yesterday afternoon uh, released committee assignments for the 2013-2014 term. The seat permanent seating chart has been completed. It is being printed and it will be distributed to you sometime next week so that uh, uh, days in advance of your return, you will know permanent seating assignments. And we will also be releasing this afternoon office assignments. So uh, the house is organized and ready to go. And I wanted you to kind of give you those um, updates. Is Representative Frazier there she is. Recognize Representative Frazier for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just want to remind all of you all that today at 12 o'clock, we will be hosting the Georgia Working Family Legislative Caucus Retreat at the Weston Hotel downtown. We're going to start off with lunch, and we have many, many wonderful presenters. A lot of you have signed up uh, to be at this retreat, and I hope to see all of you there. There will be a lot of good information disseminated about our working families and, and what we can do to strengthen our family corporation here in the state of Georgia. So I look forward to seeing all of you from 12, at approximately 12, a little after, at the Western Hotel. We will start off with lunch. Thank you. If you have an announcement and want to go ahead and um, be heard, please come up and sign up now with the messenger. If you have an announcement.
Chair recognizes Representative Beasley Teague for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, everyone. Today, I would like to introduce you to my 95 and a half year old godmother. She's up in the galley up there looking down at me. She wanted to see what I've been doing all these years. Jimmy Luton from Indianapolis, Indiana. Would y'all please stand and wave at her? She won. <laughs> Thank you. The clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. The clerk will read. First resolution, an invitation resolution, Representative Benton the 31st, be read and referred to the Committee on Rules. A resolution congratulating Jefferson High School Dragons, Class AA Football State Championship win, inviting teams and coaches to be recognized by the House. Following resolutions, privileged resolution being read for the first time for adoption this day. A resolution represent Brooks 55th, recognize and commending Nahidi Teresa Brooks. A resolution represent Brooks 55th, honoring the life member Ms. Gwendolyn Marks. A resolution represent Dudgeon 25th, recognizing student leaders, Georgia Tech, and welcoming them for Georgia Tech Student Day at the Capitol. A resolution represent Brooks 55th, honoring the life and memory of Mary Gaither McClurkin. A resolution represent Brooks 55th, honoring the life and memory of Mr. Roger Laverne McKibben. A resolution represent Maxwell. 17th, congratulating Taylor Musma on, on the occasion of receiving the distinguished rank of Eagle Scout, prestigious scouting honor, December 6, 2012. Resolution representing Holmes, 129th, recognizing January 29th, 2013, Tourism Hospitality Day at State Capitol. Resolution representing Brooks, 55th, on life memory of Letitia Diane Head, through the privileged resolutions. Is there objection to the adoption of the privilege resolutions? Chair hears none and the resolutions are adopted. House is going to be at ease for a few minutes. Um, I would ask you um, to stay close by, but we'll be at ease for just a few moments. All right, I'm going to ask the House again. I got to go out there and see if they're putting espresso in the coffee in the ante room today. House will be in order. We have an announcement or two. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Judiciary Non Civil Committee, Chairman Golick, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Judiciary Non-Civil will meet tomorrow morning at 9.30. Tomorrow morning at 9.30, Judiciary Non-Civil, 132 of the Capitol. Thank you. 
Are there any other members that wish to make an announcement? We did them earlier today. Let me, let me, the chair wants to make an announcement. You will notice that you do not have on your desk. You will notice you do not have on your desk the uh, budget books, the amended 13 budget and the FY14 budget. Those uh, were not uh, uh, printed in time. They will be available, I understand, very, very soon. But they, we will be emailing uh, shortly after lunchtime, I understand. Is that right? Emailing to each member a link that you can access to see the budget proposals for both FY13 amended and FY14. So that we will be getting that to you shortly after lunch. Let me remind you again that you will also be emailed office assignments this afternoon and that you will be uh, given permanent seating assignments next week so that um, you will know when you come back on Monday the 28th where you sit and we can start the process of moving in offices and uh, taking care of housekeeping like that. With that, the chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move this House now recess until 5 p.m. today, at which time we shall adjourn until 1 p.m. I repeat, 1 p.m. Monday, January 28, 2013. On the motion of the majority leader that this House be in recess, until 5 p.m. today, at which time it would stand adjourned until Monday, January the 28th, 2013, at 1 o'clock p.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. This House stands in recess until 5 p.m. and will be adjourned then until Monday, January 28th at 1 p.m.